Welcome to our presentation, Day Free Operations, New Region and New Services. In this uh, talk, we would like to highlight a little bit our view on uh, how to organize uh, the future of um, the public cloud and how we at the Open Telecom Cloud uh, see that. My name is Niels Magnus and together with my colleague, Sebastian, I'd like to uh, give you this uh, short overview. My name is Niels Magnus. I'm a, an architect for the Open Telecom Cloud, and I'm also acting as a community outreach manager. And um, well, with me is Sebastian. Would you like to introduce yourself as well? Thank you. My name is Sebastian Wenner. I'm the chapter lead uh, for the engineering of Open Telecom Cloud. Um, I'm doing Linux and open source since yeah, 20 years and more. And um, yeah, I'm with Open Telecom Cloud really since the beginning and uh, started this whole endeavor, which we would like to introduce uh, to you and, and talk about how we do operations and how that evolved over time. Yeah, could you... Um outline a little bit how we all started our collaboration with OpenStack? Yes, of course. Um, so as I said, I'm, I'm with that since the beginning. Uh, we started in 2015 um, to build up a cloud based on OpenStack. The, the target was to, to bring a public cloud to the market in European uh, governance, uh, in German governance, uh, obeying data protection and privacy laws, um, but also on the other hand side, being open and uh, giving the, the power of open standards to the, the end users like OpenStack is doing that. So we started in 2015 um, and really I digged out from the, the archives um, a PowerPoint slide with our initial start uh, of services, what we had or set of services as you can see here, really infrastructure as a service with a few additions. Um, but if we look at what we have today, it has really evolved a lot to um, what is now available on our cloud. Um, so from that beginning between 2015 and uh, 2016, when we, we launched Open Telecom Cloud on CBIT, um, until now, and, and this is from May this year, you can see a lot of things have changed and, and things evolved from, yeah, as I said, infrastructure as a service uh, with a few things to a whole set of portfolio. Um, what we do, um, bare metal machines that we manage, containers that we manage on the other end of the scale, um, the uh, databases, big data, um, upcoming artificial intelligence, um, really ready-made functions to, to just use and, and leverage um, for your business that you want to run. Um, but to do that, also not only the, the cloud and the technology had to evolve, but also we as a team had to evolve. And uh, this is what is uh, widely discussed uh, throughout the last year as day two operation. So uh, also having an agile team and, and whatever is needed to not only set up a cloud, but also run a cloud. Um, to give you an idea, not only in terms of service, what we are doing, but also in terms of size, what we are doing, um, some, some facts and figures here around Open Telecom Cloud. So you can see um, we, we scaled this thing beyond the, the normal limit. So 500 nodes for a typical neutron installation. Well, we, we did that by factor 10 and more. So these uh, six and a half thousand servers, this is pure compute power available to, to the end users. Nearly half a million of uh, vCPUs and more than, than three petabyte of RAM. Um, virtual machines from small to, to big, um, object storage, block storage, uh, additional services as mentioned before, 
uh, connectivity really in uh, 300 gig and also Equinix Cloud Exchange where we are available, but also as, as really a unique thing in the market, we also have a hybrid cloud. So if you do not want to run this as a public cloud or you want to have a mixed setup, um, we can put a hybrid cloud to your premise, install that there in t-shirt sizes from small to large, uh, whatever is needed, we, we can offer that uh, for you. Um, and as I said, to run that really, we, we needed to make changes to how we work and what we work and uh, follow the, the agile principles uh, to, to get that all uh, installed and, and ready. Um, nevertheless, um, this is, as we said, day two, but we are talking here about day three operations and day three is then how to yeah, make the next step, not only to have a, a single side, one cloud, but really how to grow further, how to adapt to these challenges, how to move your technology also forward to be ready for 2020 and whatever is coming beyond. Um, so how to grow, that, that was one of the topics also for us. As you could see in the, the numbers before, we, we really scaled it beyond the usual limits, but um, is the way just to, to grow further in that limit? Um, the answer of course is no, just yet another availability zone there is not the answer to, to everything. So it had to be a new region. And uh, we were looking into Frankfurt, we were looking into Amsterdam, I said, public cloud, what do you need internet? Where do you find internet? It's Frankfurt or it's Amsterdam, the, two largest uh, cloud or not cloud exchanges, internet exchange pops in the world. Um, so after a bit of back and forth, we decided for Amsterdam. Um, and yes, climate is changing, water is rising. We are well aware of that. And we picked a um, data center provider, which is also aware of that and uh, is well prepared. Um, nevertheless, we are doing everything also to do our part of the, the job to uh, protect our climate and, and not to uh, use too much energy. Uh, I will come back to that in a minute. Um, but growing is not easy. Um, so it's not just, as you can see here, putting a few servers in a rack. Sometimes you are surprised by um, some challenges which you do not think about. Um, for example, SFPs, as you can see here, we deployed like 12,000 SFPs. One of the problems was they were all coming in a separate package. So it was just boxes and boxes and boxes and, and even more boxes. So we had to unpack like 12,000 SFPs. What we installed in Amsterdam, as you can see here, is around about 2,000 devices. Uh, 1,400 servers, 500 network devices, and all kinds of other stuff. Um, a few more pictures. Also, we had some stacking problems, uh, even they were not related to OpenStack. As you can see here, also a logistics company uh, thought it was a good idea to stack uh, servers on servers. Um, turned out to be not a good idea. Um, yeah, and, and also for the, the tech guys amongst us, this is my, let my engineering heart beat faster to see a bit of cable porn here, um, how clean and nicely this is all installed. And this is really one big part of the, the story. Um, you need partners which you can rely on because what happened um, 2020, well, uh, nobody thought about that and everybody was complaining that the, the Game of Thrones uh, finale was the, the worst thing. Well, we had 2020 and we have Corona and COVID-19. Well, how do we install a data center if you can't go there? Um, that was fast the question. So the answer, not the chicken or the egg was first, really the raspberry was first. And to give you also a bit of technical insight how we tackle modern, modern problems. Um, so, um, we had a data center and as you could see before we had a lot of switches and servers and cables and everything that was installed and we had a good partner to make that according to our plans but how do you then do the next step if you are not allowed to travel and you you can't go there and the data center folks won't do the installation for you 
So luckily we had some Wi-Fi which is connected to the internet. We set up a virtual machine on our existing cloud and put a uh, open VPN on it. And we sent a pre-configured Raspberry there, which um, was able to connect to the um, to the Wi-Fi and through the Wi-Fi made an open VPN connection dialing home uh, to our virtual machine that was running there. So we had out of band access, uh, real out of band access. So we could from our home, from our office access uh, the Raspberry which was sitting there. We preloaded it with a repository, so it had all the software, firmware, whatever was needed to, to do the first provisionings. Um, we installed software for zero touch provisioning to, to do the network stuff, but also um, some Pixie stuff to, to provision the servers. And with that one, we are sitting there, as said, in your office. Uh, we could make the connection through the VM, through the internet, through the Wi-Fi, to the Raspberry, and then start provisioning. So we, we really could do the first switch, painted it magenta, um, but also the first servers. And then one by one, we, we worked our way through the infrastructure um, so that we could install software, deploy the first operating system, and, and then really have modern provisioning tools at hand to then layer by layer uh, deploy our cloud in the data center where nobody of us was able to go. Um, so this was really a, a challenge to, to achieve this, but um, by this simple solution, it really worked. And as a side benefit, also we put a, a serial cable uh, or a USB to serial cable on it. We had a mobile serial console for all these devices. Um, Yes. What else? Um, what did we learn? Um, a lot. So many, many small things matter, like the color of light. Uh, so SFP is not SFP, even we had so many of them. Cables, you need enough of them, more than you think. Um, communication to stay in touch with all your people, with um, also the data center folks, and their willingness to, to use something like WhatsApp just to check a cable or an SFP really helped to um, stay ahead of, of the, the installation. Um, also on the other hand side, uh, excavators, uh, seems like summer is excavator season. We lost so many fiber cables um, really, but um, also having backup solutions in place on redundancy uh, turned out to be very necessary. One thing um, here I want to mention, as I said before, we, we also try to do our share. Um, we are not only using x86, but also ARM. They are much more energy efficient. Um, and just to deploy some standard uh, management nodes, whatever, they are perfectly fine. So we, we really deployed large scale ARM hardware. Um, and at the end, uh, they do the job really great um, to, to run our management zone and, and everything else where we can use it. Um, nevertheless, um, also, um, we, we were talking about day three operation. It's also the tooling and um, yeah, modern solution that are important. We, we had triple O around for quite a while. We have uh, OpenStack based installations uh, for quite a while, uh, container based OpenStack installations for quite a while. Um, but putting that all together really is also a large part um, that we adapt to the technical challenges to have uh, seamless uh, upgrades and, and deployment methods and, and really um, a lot of things that we needed to adapt from just hand deployments, automated deployments um, to the way or the point where we are today to run a cloud of that scale. Um, at that point, I would hand over to uh, Niels to really talk a bit about um, yeah, the, the surroundings and, and also the, the impl uh, implications of, of doing day three operations. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. Um, indeed, uh, setting up and managing um, our infrastructure for scale, for growth is one thing. 
but um, uh, we have also a lot of services on top of uh, this infrastructure and this um, these services are ever growing and uh, evolving and if we look a little bit uh, in the past of um, information technology we see one pattern uh, that uh, reduces step by step the details um, of your uh, IT setups and at the same time um, the abstraction layer uh, increases or the uh, amount of abstraction increases. So when you in the past uh, often configured specific snowflakes that are unique, unique setups, um, we see more and more um, pre-configured, predefined and bundled solutions that come shipped readily to use. And to uh, explain this, uh, I made up uh, um, a small example. Um, think of a DBA 10 years ago. So when you had uh, an IT project, uh, which was focused on setting up a new database server, uh, and you walked over to your DBA guy, um, he would probably ask you a lot of questions. So what kind of hardware would you uh, like to uh, deploy for that? What uh, uh, drive technology should we pitch? Uh, is um, our spinning disk like SAS um, sufficient or do we need SSDs? Uh, do we have a storage network uh, dedicated to that or do we need to set up uh, one? Um, what kind of uh, database engine do we uh, need? Do we want to uh, use MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, MariaDB, and so on and so on? Then there are uh, backends uh, in, in terms of the different databases and if you remember uh, the configuration files for, for databases, there are long files with lots of options and buffer sizes and configuration options. Today, this is different. So the DBA uh, in 2020 just issues something like an OpenStack database cluster create or, or something like that. So um, here in, um, OpenStack, we have a, a trove, for example. Um, in the uh, Open Telecom Cloud, we have some, some additional uh, database um, uh, services as well. But the idea is the same. So uh, today we have pre configured uh, setups um, that fit many needs and still can be configured if necessary, indeed. Um, but uh, the overall time to market uh, um, um, is much uh, decreased and it's uh, way easier also for, for simpler setups uh, to um, bring a service like a database, a cluster configuration uh, manager or some other components um, into, um, into place. Could you uh, turn off uh, um, to the next slide? Of course. <laughs> um, what I've um, prepared here is um, the CNCF landscape. And the CNCF landscape uh, lists more or less uh, all projects that work together or augment or help or support uh, setting up a Kubernetes cluster and a, a Kubernetes framework overall. And that leads uh, to two interesting uh, questions. First is, um, where do these setups run? And we've seen often um, uh, the idea that, okay, uh, let's define something like Kubernetes or some other um, container management platform as a management platform for, for any uh, IT workload. But the question still remains, where do these clusters run upon? So what is the, the, the infrastructure layer? Of course, you could just use, um, say, uh, 
and bare metal service for that. But even those bare metal servers need to be managed in, in some way. And uh, especially if you are um, talking about scale, um, you always come back to all the uh, nitty gritty details that uh, Sebastian uh, explained to us um, a few minutes ago. So summarizing this all, um, uh, day free operations mean, uh, means making a balanced and informed uh, uh, choice. And to summarize um, the um, principle of uh, day free operations, um, we learned that um, it's uh, starting with the day uh, one uh, operations and configuration task, uh, um, as we've seen, setting up everything. That is often the fun part. Um, day two operations are made about maintaining and uh, keeping everything up and running. But we still have to think about growth and adapting to new technologies about uh, uh, different uh, cloud scenarios, about innovation, how does it fit to business and so on, optimization uh, and so on. And that is what we call day free operations. And this is something that we take great care about. And that's already uh, uh, that already concludes our presentation on, on uh, this strategy. Let me uh, very briefly point out to our OpenStack scavenger hunt, uh, a service that we are a um, uh, um, uh, uh, small um, riddle that we offer here uh, in the light of 10 years of OpenStack. Um, you have to search a few websites and then you can um, uh, win a cool gadget prize in a raffle. So if you're interested in that, uh, go to the mansion website and uh, uh, find your way around. Thank you very much um, for watching. In case you, you have any questions, feel free to um, ask them right now um, after this uh, presentation or send us an email uh, to Sebastian or me. And with that, Thanks for watching and uh, let's see if there are any questions. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.